our past church. 24 years old. That's why I thank God I'm here. That's why, because when we come into his presence, we have to remember every blessing that he has given us and everything that we take for granted. Like the grand, uh, the, we take for granted to see, to hear, to smell, to touch, to walk, to run. We take advantage of the fact that the Lord allows us to still come into his house to give him praise. We take advantage of the fact that God says, it's okay, I still forgive you, I still love you. We take advantage of that. We take advantage that, you know what, no matter what we do, we know he's our healer. He's our comforter. He's more than enough for me, Steve. He's more than enough. He's more than enough for us.
are walking through a battle because you haven't determined who your God is. There are some of you that are walking through a struggle because you have determined that you can do it in your own strength. Or you can have determined that you can do it through the world's strength and the world's but you have to choose to make me your God to make it through the battles that you are dealing with. You have to choose to say that there is nothing too hard for me. That I am your God. And though the world would perish around you, I still am your God. And I still sit on the throne of your life. And though hell would try to overcome, I am more capable than what's going on around you. You have to determine today that I am your God. And watch me break through the battle for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It wasn't exactly, I wasn't exactly on that page, but I, it's the same thing. I was thinking this in my heart and mind. That what God was saying as well as that was, remember the, the, bar, the blind Bartimaeus? He cried out to God. And the people said, be quiet. Don't disturb the master. Yes. That reaps of the enemy, doesn't it? Yes. Don't bother Jesus. Don't cry out to him. He's got more fish to fry than what you're going through in your life. But what did he do? He cried out even louder. Yes. Jesus, son of yes. David, have mercy on me. And because he knew that he, Jesus, was his healer. Yes. Because he knew that Jesus was his deliverer. He wasn't going to be muzzled by the enemy. And Jesus went up to him and said, do you believe that I can do this? He said, yes, I do. He said, according to your belief, may it be done unto you. What is Rachel's word from God and mine saying to you? It's time to give it to God. Yes. Yes. It's time not to be muzzled by the enemy any longer. It's time not to worry about what the neighbor next to you is saying and saying, oh, why are you crying out, you fool? Why are you screaming into my ears? Oh, cry out to Jesus like blind Bartimaeus. does our enemy. So can you raise your hands to heaven right now as a way of surrendering to God and say, God, the healer of my life, come in and heal my body. Heal my finances. Heal my relationships. Heal my very soul, God. And encourage me this day. God, we want you to be our healer. And to have every aspect of our lives given to you. So as we sing this next song, may that be a surrendering song to you today, knowing that the God who cares is now beginning to heal you right now. Let's sing that song.
to me from someone, and I kind of felt it bear witness. We want you to pray for the person next to you. Get with the person next to you and pray for that individual. And maybe two, maybe three of you together, but pray for the person next to you. And pray that whatever they want, don't get this day. And say it in Jesus' name. Give it the stamp of approval today. And pray and be that Jesus of the flesh today. And pray and believe that God's going to give it to you. Don't be hopeful. Be positive that God's going to give it today. Don't have fear. Have faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, release your body of believers, God. To pray for one another, God. That the prayer given up in your name, God, will begin to unleash your blessings, God. Unleash your healing, God. Unleash your grace and mercy, God. Telling the people in the audience, he's, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of riffraff there. You know what riffraff is, don't you? Rascals. And he says, a lot of you may think that the substance you take in, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever it was, he didn't use the name, you know, they knew. It's where you get your high at. He says, well, we the family of God, we get our high from Jesus. Amen. He said it can get pretty radical in here at times. You got to come back in church and find out. How many of you know it can get pretty radical? Yeah, that's right. God's radical. That's right. He's radical, but he loves us that much. Today, we'd like to welcome you again to Joy and Praise Fellowship. If you're a brand new attender today, we'd like to give you a special welcome of, of hand clap and acceptance today. If you're a brand new attender, can you raise your hand today? If you're brand new to Joy and Praise, right over here. Welcome to Joy and Praise. Welcome here. Right here. My, my brother, Rick Sims, he's visiting us today. He's a, he keeps me in my place. He's a good man. Him and his wife, Paige. His wife keeps him in his page. <laughs> Isn't that the way it works? <laughs> a preacher of mine used to always say, he says, the Holy Spirit speaks to me and sometimes in the form of my wife. You know? Welcome to join and pray today. We pray that you guys are having just a wonderful start to your service and start to your week. Before we um, take up the offering. Before we do, I'd like to share a few announcements with you first. We'll switch up the order a little bit today. And I'd like to begin by giving Marsha and Tom Barnum a chance to come and give a plug for our Kitchen um, Fellowship sign-ups. Give them a hand clap of praise. This is the last day you can sign up <laughs> for Kitchen Fellowship. For some of you that you haven't heard about this, um, we have, did, has, did anyone not get a brochure on Kitchen Fellowships? Okay. And give them to Kim. You take them. Um, 
this is, what we do is we try to put together eight people that don't know each other a lot in the church, and it goes from February through July. We ask that they meet three, two, four times during that six months. But this group can meet any time. So if you're a night person, we try to hook you with you know, people that work nights. And what you do is you just have fun together in the kitchen. We're not talking dining room. We're not talking fancy. We're talking paper plates. We're talking easy. But you will take turns sharing, having it at your home. And each time you get together, there'll be some kind of, if you want a meal, if you want to do Sundays, but everyone contributes to that. So it's just three to four times in a six-month period, and you're getting to know people and making friends. So I ask that you step out in faith, and um, Pastor and us get together and decide who, you know, who's going to be in the groups. And you just you do a fun activity, you eat something, uh, and you fellowship. So anyway, come join us. There is a, a table in the North X to sign up and a form to fill out because we need to know, you know, what your hours are, if you have any cats, if you have any allergies. So um, that helps us put you together. Thanks. Praise the Lord. The next Sam. meet for you to enjoy. Revelation, Shekinah Revelation Ministry will be Saturday, February 7th at 1 o'clock in Spring Hill. Chip and Kitty will be doing the Lion of Judah. So please see me if you want directions, if you'd like to ride. It's a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Hallelujah. A lot of you remember Chip and Kitty, Shekinah Ministry. They're going to be joining us. Is it May? I think it is, Sam. Here in May, I think it is. I forgot last I think it's in May. They'll be joining us here for service. Um, also, Wednesday, um, January 28th, is our annual business meeting. We encourage all members to uh, attend that. Of course, if you're a visitor, you can attend as well to, just to hear the happenings of the church. You just wouldn't be able to cast a vote. But we do invite you to come to the meeting. But Wednesday night, the 28th, we will be having our annual business meeting. At that meeting, not only will we be opening the books to show you where, where everything was spent this past year, and give some reports on the church, but we also will be um, uh, revising a few of our bylaws and voting in a deacon. We need another deacon for our deacon board. And at this time, um, if you are a member, we're going to give you a ballot right now. We have two individuals that are going to be um, uh, running for this position. We'd like you to pray over this for the next several weeks so that on that night, you'll be able to have a clarity from the Lord of who you feel led to, to vote for. So go ahead and start passing them out. If you're a member, raise your hand. If you haven't got a ballot yet, some of you got them on Wednesday night. And um, keep these with you. Don't turn them in. Pray over them. And then Wednesday night, the 28th, we will vote for one of these two. We got two fine candidates. Um, we got Pop and Al Bogart. Well, Pop Montero and Al Bogart. They're not brothers. They're brothers in the Lord. Um, but they will both be, both be I'm going for this. And one position is open. So we encourage you to, um, to pray on who God would have you to, to vote for. Also, on Sunday, February the 1st, the first Sunday of February, we were having our Sunday school class, 9.15, starting at 9.15, a study of the book of 1 Corinthians. Um, Jim Barter will be um, teaching that, that class, and we encourage you to sign up sheet in the back if you want to be a part of that class. Please come out and, and really be a part of that study of 1 Corinthians. It's a, great, it's a great book. Also, there'll be no youth group tonight, and the reason there's no youth group tonight is because we're going to be having a memorial service for Betty Priest. Betty Priest, as a lot of you know, is Debbie McLean's mother who passed on to be with the Lord. We'll be having a service tonight at Citrus Spring Church of God in Citrus Springs. In your, in your bulletin is directions on how to get there. For those of you that remember our, um, our wedding renewal, our 20-year wedding renewals in the same church, okay, right there in, in um, Citrus Spring going down Deltona, all right? So um, inside the, the um, bulletin is directions on how to get there. It starts at 4 o'clock. And we encourage you to come out and pay your respects to Betty and to encourage the family. It's going to be a real nice ceremony tonight at 4 o'clock for her. Also, um, after service, we're going to be having a, a worship team fundraiser. Anybody can smell it? You, 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 you smell the, the, the rice and the beans and the pork and chicken. And, like I said, I can smell it, you know? And a lot of you might be saying, man, my cologne smells different. It's not your cologne, it's the food. After service, we're going to be having a, a fundraiser for the youth group, I mean, for the worship team, $5.00. 
It gets you meal and a drink, very good deal, smells great, tastes great. But we only have limited, limited amounts back there. So first come, first serve, okay? But don't knock anybody down to get to it, all right? But after serve, make sure you get a box, a box lunch for you. Be fantastic. <coughs> Fantastic. And, and um, before we take up the offering, I'd like Scott Rosenberger to come here. He's got a um, <laughs> testimony to give, and I'll have him also pray over that offering. Okay, uh, we'll start. Lord Jesus, we thank you for um, all the blessings and provisions that you've given to us that we're able to sow into your kingdom. And uh, I pray for the people that are unable to sow at this time, that you would give them the means in the near future, that you would provide them with the jobs and um, livelihood. So we thank you for this uh, opportunity, and I, I thank you for being able to share a testimony this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. How many people know that if you want to share a testimony, sometimes you have to go through a test, and most times you do? Yes. Amen. There's been quite a few times in me and my, my wife's life where we've been tempted to hold on to our tithe for something else, whether it's Christmas gifts or just because we feel like we're running a little short. But every time one of those instances happens and I decide to put God first, I'm rewarded with a testimony. Just this last uh, December, we were blessed with a brand new stove that somebody bought for us. There's been another time where we didn't know where our money was going to come from, but we gave and we received a check in the mail for over $5,000. And it's one of those things where you can... Put your trust in God or you can put your trust in yourself. And when you put your trust in yourself, 99% of the time you're going to fail. And there's been times when I did fail that test and I said, well, I'm going to try to make this last as long as I could. And before you know it, I was out of money completely. So the test comes and you get them over and over again. And I'm saying every single time that you tithe, you're going to be blessed abundantly. But when you do come to the crossroads and there's a test and it's, it's going to hurt to give that time, that's when God will really reward you. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. I also wanted to say something about tithing. I've been guilty of not paying my tithes when I should. And I was talking to the brother here. I can't remember his name. Elliot about tithing a few Sundays ago. And he was saying how his sister is a faithful type payer and how she got blessed all the time and I just so I'm going to step out on faith and pay my tithe. It was hard but I paid it and I don't even miss it. I don't miss it at all so I'm, I'm just thankful that I'm obedient and the words say if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what keeps coming to me and I say I'm disobeying God if I'm not paying tithes. So from now on, I love him and I'm going to keep his commandment and no matter what, I'm going to still pay my tithes and trust him. Because that's what it says in his word. Keep his commandments if you love him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, before we take up the offering, I do want to make an announcement. We had our women's and men's ministry um, here meeting on Friday. And some couples were not here. And I just wanted to make mention that it was voted upon that. For February the 14th versus a dinner and a movie, we were going to do a marriage conference um, here um, at the church starting at 4 o'clock. And those couples who would want to renew their vows could renew their vows. Okay? Um, some of you were not here to vote upon that. It was already voted upon that we are going to have it. And if you would like to do that, I am going to have a sign-up sheet next week. Um, in the bag so that you can sign up so we know how many couples we will be doing for the renewing of the vows, okay? Um, <clears throat> further information will be given as the time passes along, but it, it will be for February 14th. Before we take up the, um, before we take up the offering, Steve has a, a prayer request here. <coughs> for some of you that uh, remember Brother Braxton, he used to sit over here, big, yeah. big guy, a real big guy. Well, he uh, sent me a text this morning that uh, he is in the hospital, North Pinellas, uh, uh, Florida Hospital, and uh, he has a uh, uh, right side lung infection and congestive heart failure. So uh, he, uh, he said that as soon as he got the diagnosis, the first per people he thought of was joy and praise. And, uh, and so, uh, so he asked that we would all just keep him in prayer. So uh, and, uh, my wife and I are going to 
try to get there to, to see him. So, but anyway, we just want to keep him in prayer. Say a prayer for him. Father, we just give you glory and honor, Lord Jesus. We know, Lord Jesus, that you still have everything in control. And sometimes when things, we think that it, look, it, it looks bad, Lord Jesus, that you are working even in that. You will, will get the, good, the glory out of it. So we pray right now for Brother Braxton, Lord Jesus, that you would just touch his body, uh, the lungs. We speak to you that you have to come back, and if the infection, you have to leave. You have no authority there. In congestive heart failure, you have no authority either. That that heart will be renewed as, a, as even as a younger than he than he even had it. So we just honor you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We can claim it done in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we'll go ahead and collect the offering this morning. Sometimes, some of us are not so good other days, are we not? But he's good all the time. Somebody I want to hang out with. Someone that's steady. Unflappable, you know? He's, he or she is not up one day and down the other. God's always good, you know? And I would encourage you to spend as much time with him as possible. Today I want to share with you a word about how, about how good God is. You know, um, Last week, I kind of was, was speaking to us and, and telling us a little bit about what we need to be walking in and what we need to be claiming in our lives. I hope some of you took that to, to heart and really are stepping out in faith and believing God for great things. But I will say one thing that's supposed to be different about the body of Christ. The body of Christ is supposed to live by faith and not by sight. Yeah. We're supposed to lean on Jesus. Do you know that? While those of, the, of unbelief, those that don't believe in Jesus, they put their trust in the world, we're supposed to put our trust in Jesus. That's supposed to be the difference in us compared to them. But I also know that the body of Christ still at times puts their trust in men. We still um, put our trust in Dr. Phil, in Oprah, dear Abby, our school teacher, our coach, our next door neighbor, family members, co-workers, and more time than not, a lot of these people don't even know God. We put our trust in them. Why? Because they are a tangible soul, somebody we can touch, somebody we can see. Again, the, the righteous shall live by faith and not by sight. Just because we can't see Jesus doesn't mean Jesus is not right there. Just because you don't see angels, don't believe they're not all over this place right now. Anybody ever been hit with the power of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Holy Spirit, not a, not a dead, he's a person. And that person just came all over you. When that happened, you didn't see it. Well, you sure felt it, didn't you? What I'm saying here, God wants to be 
our helper. He wants to be that person in our life that we go to first before we, you know, go to anybody else second. And I'll say that to you because I want to share with you a message I've entitled, entitled, The Lord My Helper. Is he your helper today? We'll find out. Let's bow, and, let's bow our heads right now. Father God, in Jesus' name, we need you to help us here even this morning. Help us to unplug our plugged up ears. Soften our hard hearts. Uncloud our foggy minds. And help faith arise within each one of us. Help us to receive your word as rhema today. As a revelation and an inspiration of your truth. So that we can walk in that truth. For the word says that the one that Jesus sets free is free indeed. So help us God to abide in that truth that sets us free. And bless the hearers of this word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 31.1 says it this way. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither do they seek the Lord. Today I'm here to tell you that God does not want his children to go to man for help. He wants them to go to him. Today God does not want us to go to man and this world and this society for our financial um, blessings, for our, for, for our tangible um, wisdom and knowledge, for our tangible help and restoration. He wants his children to come to him first. To him first. If you come to him first, he will either supernaturally put it into your lap or he will begin to navigate a way in your life through other means by which it will come. But he wants us to come to him for the help. I'm going to go, I'll break it down to you this way. Before you go to Tylenol, you should go to Jesus. Before you go to SunTrust Bank, you should go to Jesus. I'll prove it to you even, even simpler yet. We bought that property, as you know, for the new church. Pastor Eddie, tangible numbers were coming in low. I was thinking, we're going to have to borrow some money. But after a wise man named Tom Barnum began to pray about that, and God began to do what he does best with our finances, Tom said, we don't have to borrow anything. God already provided. Amen. Amen. If we would have went for it with the first thought, we'd be having a little outstanding loan to be paying back right now, but we don't have that, do we, Tom? <laughs> See, we went to God for help. He yeah. 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 past week, we had an architect come here and began the process on drawing up your, your church. And he was very optimistic on what he could do. Yeah. And we're believing for it. And in the day to come, you're going to see a, a, a drawing of what the church will look like. That didn't come by man, that came by God. Yeah. You see, God does not want us to run to man or this world for our help and our security. He wants us to first run to him. Yeah. He wants to be that ever-present help in a time of trouble. Yeah. You see, God wants to be our provider. He wants to have total access into our lives. But as, as free will agents, we're all free will agents. We're all born with a, with a free will to choose or not to choose. God won't force any one of us. We have to give him permission into our lives. Do you know that? And I'm going to go on a limb and tell you that even goes for your pastor. You have to allow me to pastor you. You really do. You have to allow me access into your life. You have to allow me to speak these, these truths into your lives. For me to truly be able to pastor you. If you shut me down, put me away, like a, like, like a laundry basket, I can't help you. The same thing with God. We have to allow God as free will people to come into our lives and have access to our lives. Exodus 20, verse 5, it says, I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. For years I struggled with that passage. But see, I struggled with it because we didn't quite, or I didn't quite understand the word jealousy. You see, I only understood jealousy in the way we approach the word jealousy here today. See, in the book of Exodus, they use the word jealous. In the book of Galatia, they use the word jealous. And they're two totally different jealousies. I'll explain it to you. You see, 
Jealousy to the way you and I may look at jealousy means that we envy or desire something that somebody else has. Somebody looks good, you want to look like them. You're jealous of the way they look. Somebody plays a great instrument, you can't play yourself out of a wet paper bag, you want to play like they play. It's a jealous thing, you want it. You want what doesn't belong to you. You're jealous of it, you're envious, you want to have that. But you see, God is not that type of person. God says here that he is a jealous God. It means God is going to have to be envious or, or jealous of anything that you have, that because everything that he has belongs to him. I'll break it down another way. It's a good jealousy here. If a man sees somebody flirting with his wife, it's appropriate for that man to be jealous because the only person that has the right to flirt with his wife is him. She belongs to him. That's a good jealousy. But a bad jealousy is when you and I are jealous or envy somebody because of their abilities or because of what they have or what they look like. That's a bad jealousy. God is justified and appropriate in being jealous about our affection, about our dedication and our devotion yeah. because everything and you and I belong to him. Yeah. It doesn't belong to somebody else. Yeah. We belong to him. We were bought with the price of Jesus' yeah. blood. Yeah. He's the creator. We are the creation. He's the potter. We are the clay. It all belongs to him. So when he's jealous, he has a right to be jealous because it all belongs to him. And when we go to other people for help and go to other people for worship and dedication, God said, I'm a jealous God because you're giving to them what properly belongs to me. Come on, man. Amen. Are oh, you with me now? I knew you'd catch up. I knew you'd catch up. God is a jealous God because he wants us totally. He's the ultimate parent. And like any parent that should be involved in their kids' lives, he wants to be involved in their lives. Like any parent that wants to know what your kids are surfing on the internet, and, and what time and what party your kids went to, and how late they stayed out, and what they spent and where they went, the same way a good parent would do that with their kids, our Heavenly Father wants them to have every access to our lives. He wants to know what we're surfing, where we're going, what we're doing, what we're saying, who we're hanging out with. He wants to have total access. Why? Because he's the ultimate parent. And that you and our parents understand that principle, how much more should God know it? He wants to be the helper. He wants to be that jealous God that loves us more than any other. And he wants us to give that same type of devotion back to him. And why should we give it back? Because it's deserving. It's his. It don't belong to anybody else. The psalmist knew that. The psalm says in Psalm 118.7, The Lord, you see, he's with me. He's my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. Get that. He says, the Lord, he's with me. He's got my back. Wherever I go, he's right there with me. And because he's with me, I know he's going to help me. And because I know he's going to help me, no reason for me to hope that I'm going to triumph. I know I'm going to triumph. He says, I now look on triumph on my enemies. Means I've already got it. If the Lord be for you, who can be against you? Greater is he, right, that lives inside of us than he that lives in the world. And my scripture also says that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yeah. So what I'm telling you here is this. Am I slipping? Is what you're saying? Okay. I thought you were praising God back there. <laughs> I'm rambling. Praise God. So what I'm saying is, is that if God be for us, no one should be against us. So we should put our trust fully in him as our helper, yeah. as our helper, mm -hmm. as that one that goes with us. You know, I've had a lot of friends in my life that say, I got your back, and they did have my back. It was way back. <laughs> <laughs> way back. Another county back. But not God. He's right there, side by side. Sometimes even taking the lead. You know that every time you, you get ready to fight a battle, you know that God's already prepared to do it for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just got to be willing to do it. You see, as we as needy people, we must understand that God, the God who cares, is there to meet our needs. He wants to meet our needs. That's a good deal. Some of you, you know, even us in ministry sometimes, we have a long week or a long month or a long day, and one of you may call for prayer or call to help us, and we see that caller ID, we go, oh, God, I've had a long week. Do I really want to answer this phone right now? It's got the ER written all over it. Do I really want to go there? Well, if it's that important, don't leave a message. You know? God never... 
looked at his phone that way and says, should I answer this or should I not? Whenever we call on God, he comes and answers. He's there right away. So if he's there right away, why do we want to give anybody else what deserves to God to give? That's our devotion. <laughs> But here what I want to ask you here this morning is some application. How are some ways that we can allow God into our life? You see, I used the word there, allow. And you say, how can that be? If God has all the power, you know, if he has all the understanding and wisdom, how, how can I do anything to stop him? Because you can because you are free will. God's not going to force himself on any of us. So how can I, how can you, how can we allow God into our lives so that then he can help us in our lives? Well, the first thing I want to share to you is communication. Communication is a beautiful thing. Do you know that more disputes happen because of a communication breakdown? It happens in our house all the time. My wife will tell our son, son, throw out the trash. Hours go by. Son, why didn't you throw out the trash? You mean right now? <laughs> he thought she meant like next month or something. <laughs> no, it's now. Communication. We all we can be communicate. We say a time to set your clocks forward or set your clock back an hour. If you miss that communication, you either hear very early and got to hear a pastor talking to you, or you hear very late and miss worship. Communication breakdown. Communication is a beautiful thing. A lot of people don't communicate with God because they say, well, God knows everything. Why do I got to tell him what, what my, my needs are? He already knows it. How many of you have had that theory before? God already knows it. So what do I got to tell him? Because just because he knows it, guess what? He is the ultimate mind reader. Just because God knows it, you have not given him access into it. Amen. He's not going to violate your will. You have to say, God, I know you already know what I have a need of here, but I'm going to let you know right now that I, I'm going to let, allow you to move on my situation. You can come on in now. I need some help. I've already exhausted my means. I got ahead of you. Now I need you to come in and help me today. You see, throughout the course of our day, how many of you know that we have tons of different words and different voices going through our head? Some words and voices may be me or own, may be our neighbor. Some may be the enemy, and some are gods. It's our job to try to distinguish which ones are gods and which ones are not gods. Right. Now, I was talking with Erica today about this. We had a great conversation about this. Eric said, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I believe that. I said, I'm going to tell you why. He thought, or he, can I say this? Am I, am I allowed to say this? He said, I thought there were only two, two voices, God's voice and the enemy's voice. And you got to determine. I said, no, there could be our voices too. I said, think about it this way. You ever have someone share something to you? throughout the course of the day, and for some reason later on in the day you can't get, let's say, Steve's voice out of your mind, what he said to you. The words Steve said are still going on in your head that day, that question he might have posed in a men's group or something. See, we've got all kinds of voices going on in our mind, but we got to determine which ones are God's. And we got to, because he wants to have communication. He's talking to us. Some of you that say, God's never spoken to me. Yes, he has. I'm going to say God's spoken to you all day long. Just haven't really distinguished his voice versus the voice of others. You see, to communicate with God, you have to allow him in, and you have to be willing to communicate back, have that dialogue. Gentlemen, you ever have your wife mad at you? And you're willing to exercise that scripture that said, do not go to bed angry, but they won't talk to you. The door is shut, it's locked. You're talking to the dog, talking to the cat. She's already got the kids played against you. They ain't talking to you either. Thank God God doesn't shut the door. He wants to talk. He wants to communicate. You see, Matthew 7, 7, Jesus says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Knock on your spouse's door. They don't open up sometimes. They're mad. They've been slow to let it go. But not God. He said, if you ask of me, if you seek me, if you knock, I will communicate with you. I will open up to you. I will help you. First time we get into trouble, the first thing we do is we call our neighbor, we call our, our, our siblings, we call somebody else. More time than not, they call the pastor. I might start distributing my cell phone bill out to everybody. He says, ask, and it will be given to you. He didn't say ask, and then maybe if you had a good week this week, maybe God may give it to you. He says ask, and it will be given to you. 
He says here in Mark 11, 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, prayer is communication if you didn't know that, believe that you already have received it and it will be yours. Didn't we just sing a song about belief a little while ago? Well, when you communicate that belief to God by prayer and say, God, you know what? I have a need. And my need, I believe, will line up to you because this, you, you don't want your children to be struggling. You don't want your children to be, to be poor and broken and, and hurting. So, God, I have a need. God, I have a need. You know, the other night, we left here Wednesday night. I was sharing this with a few people um, the other day. And as always, the pastor, the first one here, and the last one to leave, I left about 9.15. I'm going down 491, going home. How many of you were out of here pretty late Wednesday night yourself? You know what I'm talking about. And I'm going down 491, and I was thanking God for the service and his principles and the, and the teaching and that kind of stuff. And I said, Lord, I turned on my street. I said, Lord, you said we have not because we ask not. I said, Lord, I'm not even asking you. Maybe I should have. That's what my mistake was. I'm not even asking you to give my wife a job. I'm asking you to give her at least a phone call. She's got a lot of seeds in the ground and hasn't really, really received a phone call. As I said that, I turned my car off in my driveway. I walked in the house. She was on the phone with a doctor that called her at 9 o'clock at night. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said, I made a mistake. I didn't say, give her the job. She ain't got the job yet. But she, they're, 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 they're thinking about it. I made a mistake. But what I'm saying to you here is, as I was speaking, God was already working. Communication. Communication. The psalmist says in Psalm 17, 6, I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. He says, turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. You know what I like about that? It's very personal. He says, my God. He wasn't talking about Phil's God or Steve's God. He's talking about my God. He's my God. I'm calling my God like my wife, my husband, my, my children, my uncle, my next door neighbor. That's my God. He said, I'm calling my God who hears me and he'll answer my prayer. You see, we need to get more in the habit of calling on God and not calling on someone else. Now, you may call on God and God may direct you to somebody else. He said, I'm going to use so-and-so to help you in this situation. That's fine. That works. But we should go to him first. Amen? Amen. The next way we can let him get into our lives is by following his instructions. Following his instructions. I'm going to pick on my wife here for a minute. Not because she's an easy target, because I pay for it later. It's just because it just, it makes, it just, this is the truth. A lot of you ladies sometimes like to take shortcuts instead of having your husbands put together an entertainment center or some type of shelving, you like to do, do it. And they say, you want me to help you with that? And you say, no, I got it, I got it. You sure don't, because you say, you look at that, you say, that ain't going to come together right. No, I'll do it. And how many of you know when you put these shelves together and these entertainment centers together and stuff, they have a, they have a, a, a what do you call it, a finished side, an unfinished side? Yeah. Now, how many of you know that when you have shelves, you should have finished, finished, finished. You shouldn't have some unfinished and finished all together. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes when first lady puts a shelf together. And I find that it happens because she don't read the instructions. <laughs> but before you laugh too much, and I bet you some of you have done the same thing. And some of you say, well, it's at the bottom shelf, and I'm not going to take the whole thing apart for that one shelf, so I'll just put a cloth over it. Nobody will tell the difference. <laughs> Scotty, right? She's pointing at Scotty. What I'm saying here is we have to begin to read the instructions of life, which are found in God's Word, if we're going to be able to put some things together in our lives. Got to read the instructions. You see, when Abraham... And Isaac went up to offer the sacrifices to God. Isaac asked his dad the famous question. Who provided the sacrifice? They didn't know he was the sacrifice. And Abraham said, God will provide. And you know he provided that ram in the bush. As we follow God's instructions, it's very important for us to understand here this morning that we don't always have to necessarily understand the instructions. We're just to trust the instructions. See, Abraham didn't understand the instructions of God to take Isaac up there. He just trusted him. There's no way Abraham could have possibly understood how my son, the promised son, the one that descended after me are going to come through, could possibly be offered up on the altar. But he didn't question the instructions. He just trusted the instructions. 
A lot of us don't lean on the instructions of God because we don't always understand the Bible. We don't always understand how that really fits into my life. How that going to benefit me? But if we will only trust the instruction, we would have all kinds of descendants in our lives, if you know what I mean. Prosperity and health and great things into our lives if we would only trust the instructions. Very important. The word, the word follow, follow the instruction. The word follow means to go or come after. To proceed along, get this, to engage in as, in as a way of life. To keep one's attention fixed. It said to engage as a way of life. Do you realize that trusting God and his instructions should be a way of life to the believer? Amen. A way of life. Not just a, a thing to do, not just a, a, a pastime or a, or a hobby like a game of golf or fishing, but no, it should be a way of life. We should be in the word daily as a way of life. The Christian life. I give you some instructions in God's word that tells you two ways of living. Galatians 5, 19 to 21 says, The acts of the flesh, he gives the instructions about the flesh. He said the flesh is obvious. They're sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. He said, I warn you, I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. This type of, this type of instruction is where at in the word of God. Right. It's saying this is not the way to live. Those who live this way will not inherit God's kingdom. It's a, it's a clear instruction. Now, if you don't read the instruction manual, you don't understand that. But it's obvious things. It says it right there. It's obvious. The acts of the flesh are obvious. These are what the flesh wants to do. But just because the flesh wants to do it doesn't make it beneficial for you. That's what the Bible said. Remember Paul said, just because everything is, been, um, everything is um, permissible doesn't mean that it's beneficial. That's the word of God. But look at the flip side. He goes, let me give you some more instructions in the next very, very, very next verse. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He says, against such things there is no law. He said, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So he gives us, he gives us clear directions or clear instructions in his word. If you want to carry on as the flesh will carry on in these type of ways, you won't inherit his kingdom. But if you carry on in the way of the Spirit... As you carry on, there is no law against you. It's pure instructions. A lot of us say, well, anybody should know that. Tell that to the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> we have the whole world around us, not just U.S. of A. We have the whole world that lives that way, the flesh. That way of the flesh. I go a step further. Psalm 1, 1 and 3 says, Blessed is the man, or it could be woman, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seats of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruits in the season, whose leaves also shall not wither, get this, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. Ooh. The laws of the Lord. The laws of the Lord are his instruction book, the Bible. And when we go by the laws of the Lord, everything we do will prosper. So you're really only hurting yourselves. I'm only hurting myself when we don't listen to the instruction manual. It means a life that should be led with the, with the nice finished look is all unfinished. You cannot walk around without reading the instructions of the Christian walk and have your life lining up to the will of God. Your life will be unfinished. But we line up to God's instruction books and line up to his word, we will have that finished life. It'll be flipped over. Yeah. See, the problem is that many of us are, are, are going through life without the instructions, and we're going with the unfinished life. And a lot of us are covering it up with things, like we said that cloth does to our shelves. Yeah. We cover it up. We wear a nice set of clothes to church, and we maybe carry a Bible in, maybe have a fish, a fish magnet on the back of our car. Maybe even throw a few bucks in the offering plate and make people think that we're on fire for God. We got this thing right. But only God knows our hearts. Right. Only God knows our hearts. Amen. See, it's important to read the instruction book. I'm going to go on the limb and tell you something here. I know some of you 
have come to know the Lord in a different way. Some of you came to know the Lord through a situation, maybe through, a, through another person talking to you about God, or maybe a song or something. I came to give my heart to Jesus because of his word. When I read his word, it began to, to show me some things I didn't know. When I read his word, it began to bring some conviction to my life in an area that I need to be convicted in. When I read his word, it started to line up some things and, and focus some things that were out of focus. And before you know it, I began to walk a path that I didn't walk before. No one had to tell me, no one had to bribe me, no one had to scare me. God's word led me down that path. See, what I'm saying to you is the instruction books will always help you build up your shelf of life the right way. You won't have an unfinished shelf on top of a finished shelf, trust me. The last thing I want to leave with you today, if you want God into your life to be your helper, you must trust him with the results. <laughs> trust him with the results. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, that what? Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Am I right? It says furthermore in Proverbs 28, 26, that he who trusts in himself is a fool. But yet we still don't always trust God. You know what I found out about God? That he's always right. The only thing that God does not know how to do is be wrong. He's always right. And if a God who's always right, always perfect, always on time, never late, always prospering, why do we not put our trust in that? Yeah, come on. But yeah, we put ourselves, our trust in ourselves, but the Bible says in Proverbs, there's nothing but foolishness. And the reason why I believe we do that is because I think in our fleshly nature, we don't like God's results. Because what God's going to do to us conflicts with what our flesh says. What God wants to do for us lines up to our spirit man, not our flesh man. And a lot of us say, God, I don't want to ask you for this. I know what your answer is going to be. But you don't understand that he has something even better for you. Did he not with Abraham and want to think about Isaac? On the surface, I don't even think Abraham told his wife about this situation. I didn't go into your wife saying, hey, I'm taking our firstborn son, our only son, the one that you, you had at the age of 90, and um, I'm going to go kill him. <laughs> now, if you're like me, some of us at times have said to our spouses at home, I'm going to kill your son or daughter. <laughs> We've been there. <laughs> this is a whole different type of killing here. But I do believe we struggle with God because we don't always understand God. But let's face it. He told Noah... Build an ark. But I only build the ark, build it on top of a mountain. But I only build on top of a mountain, build on top of a region of a mountain that never had rain before. That makes absolutely no sense. Thank God Noah trusted him. If it wasn't for his trusting him, we wouldn't be here today. Do you know that? How about Abraham? You're going to have a child. The child. 24 years later, that came, that came to pass. 24 years at the age of 100. Did that make any sense at all to Abraham? And at the time when he finally had the child, he said, well, I can barely walk, but I can at least kind of walk the kid a little bit. Now he said, I go kill him. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, does it? And that's the reason why so many of us don't trust God, because to us, in our little minds, it doesn't make any sense. But guess what? It's not supposed to make any sense. We're just supposed to trust him. Amen. Because it's where it says to. A total surrendering, a trusting. I want to look at what the psalmist says here. Psalm 37, 4 and 6 says this way. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness at the light and your justice at the noonday. But I like what it says here. It says, it says, delight yourself in the Lord. I mean, go into this situation, go into the conversation, go into this, this instruction, this, this trusting atmosphere, go into it and delight. It's almost like giving. You know, he, he, he blesses a joyful giver. Go into it with delight. Don't go into it and say, God, I need to talk to you about something. God, I really don't want you to, to answer me the way I know you're going to answer me. You keep, coming, you, keep, you keep messing me up here, God. 
If you're going through with your head down, I want you to go into it saying, God, I trust you with everything. Yeah. I trust you with all things. You're the ultimate father. If you say I should hang out with that fast girl, I should hang out with that fast girl. <laughs> if you say I should stay away from the bad weed, by God, I'll stay away. If you say it, I'll do it. And that'll settle it right there. I trust you. It's good. If we were going into that and understand that there is to no and not always a bad thing, I think we'd have more blessings in our lives. Yeah. Why do we hate the answer no so much? Long time ago, I had a young lady that I was kind of considering marrying. On the surface, she seemed to have everything a man would want. You know, she had a good education, she was pretty, she was smart, she didn't talk much. <laughs> but how many of you know that God had all the plans? And 21 years later, I, I thank him for it. I thank him for it. Because God's ways are right. And my ways are wrong. <laughs> Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. And he will call the light to shine and justice to be on your new day. How many of you know we need some, some light to shine and some justice to be on our new day? The psalmist went on to say, in Psalm 28, 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts. And I am helped, for my heart exalts. And with my song, I give thanks to him. He says here, he is not only my strength and my joy, he said he is my help. Guess what? There's not one of us in this room that won't want to help somebody else. And sometimes we'll do a pretty good animal job, but guess what? I ultimately want God's help. If I can't get God's help, I don't want anybody's help. You know that? You gotta want God's help. Amen. God's help. Because if you get God's help, you're gonna be alright. But without God's help, man, you got a you got a long haul ahead of you here. Let me give you one more for the road if I can. Psalm 910 says, And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. If you feel forsaken, if you feel that God hasn't been in your life, if God's not answering your prayers, there's a good chance you ain't really sought him the way you should. Because if you seek him, you'll find him. And if you knock on his door, we talked about earlier, he'll open up to you. And a lot of us have already found him. We just don't like the answer we got. It's like, one, it's, it's, like, it's like a Jehovah Witness, you know. They'll come to your house several times before they finally, finally put a mark on your house that don't go there no more. They'll come over and over. I invite them back. They just won't come back to my house. Because God loves them. God wants them to be saved. He gave their life. But um, they don't come to my house anymore. But we have to trust Him with the results. And you know, as we leave here today, i got to tell you, God's on a different timetable than we are. Sometimes the result will come, but it will come in a different way and at a different time. we got to be patient. we got to trust Him. Sometimes God will work things out in a different way than you think it should be worked out. we got to trust Him. You know, I was driving to Winter Haven. I'm going to close like this. Driving to Winter Haven the other day with my son. And usually everywhere I go with my son, it's always my time to talk to God because my son sleeps in the car. I'm afraid when he finally starts to drive on his own, he's going to crash the car because he always falls asleep when he's in the car. He may fall asleep at the wheel. I look over there, we're not even three minutes into the ride, and he's already doing this already, you know, you know. I'm like, my word, you can't take it for three minutes? If I would do that, when he was a baby, I would just put him in the car to sleep. Go buy him a bed. But I also found out that it kind of makes him a little grouchy for some reason. That's not the time to talk to him in the car. He don't want to talk. So I've learned after 17 years now, finally, it took me 17 years to finally get this in my head. Don't, don't strike up a conversation. So I did. So I'm driving down the highway, and he's sleeping. And all of a sudden, because he had took this five-hour energy drink before we left the house, and all of a sudden, he sprung up like a jack-in-the-box. And I'm, I just kind of gave him the corner of my eye and looked. said, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. 
and I'm driving. But I still didn't strike a conversation, see, because I knew already, I've learned already, I finally started to read the instructions here, it doesn't work. And all of a sudden, he started to open up dialogue. And for about one hour, we probably had the best talk we've had in years. You see, God does things in a way that we don't understand. His ways are higher and better than our ways. Let's not get ahead of God sometimes. God hasn't worked out some things in your finances yet. Don't get ahead of God. Let's just wait on God a little bit here. He'll work it out. Some things with your children or your spouse, he'll work it out. Some things in your spiritual walk with God or even, even like my wife came looking for a job, don't get ahead of God. Let, let, let God do it for you. He'll work it out. You know, what I'm saying here is, though, God wants to be that ever-present help in our time of trouble. But we have to allow Him. We have to say, God, here I am. Come into my life. Come into my life, God. Be that great parent, God. Have access to what I look at on the Internet. Have access to my bank account. Have access to the, the friends I hang out with. Have access to the places I go to, God. You can critique me in every aspect of my life. I'm an open book. Isn't that what us parents do? We want to know where our kids are going. We want to know how late they, hang, they, they stay out and the people they hang out with. We, we put them blockers on the, on the internet so they can't go on certain sites, do we not? That's what God wants. He wants total access into our lives. He wants to be our helper. And those of us who do take his help, we prosper in every way possible. And those of us who reject that help, the Bible says we're fools and we don't prosper. It's pretty simple stuff. So can you stand with me today here in the house of God? I've often heard them with the most joyful noise you ever hear from a pastor is, can you, can you stand with me? But people are saying, hallelujah, we're almost done. But if you're not joyful, I could be like one of the airline pilots. You ever seen an airline pilot don't land the plane, Brother Steve, and don't stay on the runway for 30 more minutes? You just want to get off the plane, but they won't let you off the plane. They're staying there, waiting there, waiting there, waiting there. Today, I believe we should wait on God just a minute here. And I would like Pastor Jones, Pastor Williams, and Pastor Ellis to come and join me here to help pray for some of you. You see, some of you here today will boldly say, I believe in God. But what but, but Willie can't honestly say, I've trusted him totally. Can't honestly say that you read his instruction book all the time. Can't honestly say you communicate with him on a daily basis. And God is saying, how about today be that day where there's a paradigm shift in your life? Where today you begin to communicate with God on a regular basis. Where today the day you begin to read the instructions for your life daily. And today be a day that you begin to trust him. Not try to analyze it, but just trust him with the results. And let God be God. His ways are higher than our ways. Can I share something with you that goes along perfect with this message? Maybe we can just leave it so you can hear me because I think it's a good, a good thought. At 6 o'clock this morning, probably one of the finest Christian friends I ever had passed away. But, let me tell you, about 14 years ago, I was preaching a revival about 20 minutes from the church that I pastored. And that night, I didn't know him. He came into the service. When the altar called, he came. And I remember I was standing like this, and he came right there to me. And I asked him about his soul. He said he was backslid. And he said, but nobody cares about me. He said, God doesn't care. Nobody cares. And I looked at him, and I said, who told you that? I remember those words. And I said, because it's a lie. Now, I'm speaking to some of you today to this. It's a lie. That night he gave his heart back to the Lord. He became one of the finest. He was not wealthy by any means. In fact, he grew up poor and was somewhat still kind of many times didn't have enough. But he loved the Lord. And anyone that will give God a chance and open the door of your life, he will help you. But if you don't do that like he did that night,
then God can't help you. But if you'll open the door, God wants to help you. So why don't you be like him if you need prayer? Why don't you come and give God a chance? At this time, we'll open up the altars as the choir sings quietly or softly. Let God be your helper today. You see, God knows what you have need of. Brother, Brother William, would you stand here in the, in the middle so we have room here? God knows what you have need of. It may be health. It may be finances. It may be salvation. It may be a troubled mind. But come and let the God who, who cares be your ever-present help in the time of your trouble. Let him help you. Why leave here not getting the help that God wants to give you? He can change your whole circumstance. And one simple prayer can change your circumstances. You can leave here as I ever prayed all night and God was already already working. You can leave here and offer up a prayer and God can be working on your behalf before you get home today. Today. Hallelujah. Let him touch you.
chance to be your helper here today. Don't shortchange God. Don't, don't deny what he's capable of doing. But God, he can do it. He can do the impossible. We'll be leaving here in a minute. You can get your lunches to go in a minute. You can come and pay your respects tonight for Betty Priest. The family would appreciate that. But go ahead and take care of now what your life has need of. So you can leave here satisfied today. Hallelujah. We always have time to eat. We always have time to pay our respects. But you never had the second chance to have your life changed. To have a situation dealt with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The righteous shall live by faith and not by sight. You gotta believe it. You gotta believe you have that victory we're singing about. You gotta believe it. If you believe it, it'll be given to you. his race for sure. We'll be celebrating Betty Priest. Maybe they've gone, came in contact with each other already up there. Who knows how God works. But today as we get ready to leave, I'd like to say a prayer over you. And as you leave, make sure you get your lunch if, you're, if you can and come out tonight to show your respects to, to the family. But I want you to leave knowing that God loves you. That he loves you. If no one else loves you, God loves you. And if God loves you, that should be enough. And today I want you to be encouraging God. And knowing that God who cares wants to help you, give him access into your life. Not just access at church, but access every day of your life. And watch how God turns it around for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all the eternal work you've done here this day. For all the lives that have been changed, for all the encouragement that has been spoken, for all the deliverances and healings that have been met, dear God, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Help us, God, to remember in the days to come that your ways are higher and better than our ways, that we don't have to always understand the instructions. We're just to trust you in them, God. Help us to communicate with you, God, and to pray to you daily. And help us, God, to trust you in all of our ways. Be with us, put a hedge of protection around us, keep us safe, and bring us back at the appointed hour. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
God bless you. Go in the peace of the Lord. Get some food.